Hi, and welcome to Fonz and Porter's Essex Block of the Month featuring these lovely Quilting Treasures fabrics. I'm your host, Jenny K. Parks. You can check me out at Jenny K. Quilts on my website and my YouTube channel. Today in episode five, we're gonna make a pinwheel star block, and I'll show you some tricks for that. So the first thing that we wanna do is make our pinwheel center. And let me show you. So to make our pinwheel center, I'm gonna take this guide here and I'm gonna draw a line on both sides. And I'm just using a pencil. You can use whatever marker or pen or colored pencil or whatever that's gonna work best for you. I'm gonna be careful, make sure they're nice and straight. Okay, right sides together. Center that on there. Try to get that just right. So you'll find when you're making these that if you, if you encounter a mistake, it can have a lot to do with maybe you didn't line it up right or maybe you were a little wonky drawing your lines. And if that's the case, you just know, all right, I can fix that next time. I learn a lot by doing the trial and error type of method. So I'm just gonna take my next one, I'm gonna chain piece it together. Lift that up, slide them under. I think every project, every project that I do, it's a learning project. It's gonna have something to teach me, something I can get from it that I hadn't figured out before, something to help me progress further. I don't think you ever reach a total finish line and say, duh, I know everything I need to know now. There's always gonna be some little trick, some way that you can improve on what you're doing. All right, I snipped these apart, and now I'm gonna sew on the other lines here. So if you're having trouble getting things to match up or getting it just right, don't worry too much about ripping stuff out. I mean, I know, I know how to rip out a seam, but I think I learned more from analyzing that seam and then trying it differently the next time than I do from ripping out everything. And I think after a point too, if you rip out too much, the fabric that you're working with loses all its integrity. You're not going to be able to get it to go together nicely anyways, and you may just have to start all over again. All right, let me cut these apart. So my ruler's on point to point, and if I did good, which I think I did here, then my quarter inch seam line on my ruler matches up with where I just stitched. And that's when you know it's just great. All right, so let's press these out. And I want to press on all of them to the red fabric that I have here. And I think it's important, you could press to the lighter one if you want to. And when, if you're making these and say the colors are exactly the same or you know exactly the same values, there's not really a darker one or lighter one, just pick one color and be consistent. That's gonna be really important as we're trying to get everything to go together. Again, I'm setting the seam. I want the fabric to do what I want the fabric to do, not what it thinks it may want to do. Bring that down. You're kind of flapping up at me there. And when I'm also pressing, I try to press gently so that it doesn't skew. Because what can happen if I like dove in there with the point of the um, iron too aggressively, it might get a point in my seam, you know, make a little, a little hiccup. And I want to avoid that. Oh, look at those. All right. So now I want to trim these dog ears here. And if you find when you're trimming, you know, if you find when you're looking at it, say I'd pressed a seam, 
you know, it got a little, a little wonkiness there, then it's perfectly fine to flip it over in this direction and press it that way. However you need to press it to get the job done, that's what you do. All right. Got all four together. Now I need to make my pinwheel center. I am a big fan of laying everything out because it is my tendency to, <laughs> to sit it down and sit down at the, at the sewing machines. But wait, that's not right. I did something I did wrong there. And to avoid that, this is what I do to lay them out. Now, because I've pressed everything towards the red, then I can put these together and snuggle them into each other. And they, oh, let me make sure. So I want to sew on this line. Okay. I just have to get that in my mind or I'm going to be in trouble. Um, so you can see that these will nestle right into each other because the seams are on opposite sides. And that is what I want. Now, I don't want my machine, sometimes with this extra bulk here, the machine will start to chew on it, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna start sewing at this end. And then after I'm done with this one, I'm just gonna pick up the next block and keep going. And I can also feel, as I'm sewing, I, I have my finger on this seam, and I can feel that it's all nestled into each other. So that's another trip tip. Get the feel of how it feels when it's right. All right, I'm gonna put these guys together. There we go, okay. And also starting with the seam, um, the seam that I wanna match closer towards me, it gives me time to fix it <laughs> before we get there. Okay, see, look how those tuck into each other so nicely. Now here, what I'd suggest is just laying them down here like this and press them both in this direction because we're gonna flip them around when we put them together. Nice and gently. Let me kind of heat it up this one, but I'll heat it up a little bit more. If you're too aggressive at this point, you can really skew your blocks. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you how I know that, but it's really possible, easy to do. Okay, so what we wanna do is match those two intersections together, and we want them to match exactly. So, Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay them over like this on top of each other. And I can feel when everything is matched in place, but like if I fold it back a little bit, I can see that it's matched really well. I could also, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tricks. I'm gonna show you Captain Glue Stick. This little guy is my hero especially when you're working with lots of different fabrics and some might be different weights or different textures and everything. It's hard to get as accurate and consistent as you would if everything, if all the fabric was consistently the same. This glue stick really helps. So let me show you. I fold down just the seam allowance and I put just a tiny bit in there in the seam allowance. And then I close it up and that's it. It will make everything fit together really nicely. And I had to do that. I was making uh, a quilt at a for a sample at a shop, and it was just scrappy triangles. I think 350 half square triangles, and I'm telling you, some of those it'd be fine. 
you know, just right, just right, just right. And then the next one would be bam, all over the place. <laughs> what happened? And that's when I started to just glue it into place because otherwise I couldn't make it happen. So remember we have the X marks in the spot. I'm gonna make sure I go right over that X. Whoop, whoop, it slipped a little. Sometimes it's bulky in there and it can slip on you. If you go slow and adjust as you go, you'll get pretty good results. So it's all the stuff you're learning here. You're gonna be awesome at stars by the time we're done. All right, let's see how I did. Ah, oh, very nice, very nice. Okay, so let me press that. And again, it's another one of those, you really wanna be careful to press because it's starting to get bulky in that seam. So you wanna press it, get it to lay flat. Come on, there you go. All right. Well, I think that is pretty good. Okay, now we need our flying geese that are gonna go along the outside. And we have to do it a little bit differently because we're going to have, um, they're, they're different colors on each side. One side is red and the other side is navy. So we can't use the same quick piecing method that we did last time. So let me show you this here a little bit. I'm gonna take this guy. These are, this is my goose. These are both my sky. I'm gonna take him and I'm just gonna draw a line. Again, using this wonderful little guide here. I'm gonna draw a line from corner to corner. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna draw that on there. And then I'm gonna stitch from corner to corner. But actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start stitching up here. Because if you stitch down here, sometimes it can, if it's the first one that you're feeding through, it can get kind of mangled up in the machine. So I'm gonna start with this one. That'll keep any problems like that from happening. So one side is that. And be sure not to mix up which ones the red and the blue go on. <laughs> so I made that mistake on one of them, like, oh no. All right, try it again. And we talked previously about making those little tiny blocks. I don't know if I would do that with this one because they're starting to get pretty tiny. I don't know if we want it to be this tiny. Oop, almost cut on the wrong place. Okay, so we're gonna cut off this part of the flying goose. I mean, you could do that little tiny, but it's really teeny tiny. And then I'm gonna press towards the sky. Now this one, if you're dealing with a directional fabric, which this red is somewhat directional, you could control which way you want it to go. You can't always do that when you're making flying geese. You can't always control it, I'm sorry. The geese will do sometimes what they wanna do and you just sit back and say, okay, if that's how you feel about it. When you encounter errors with flying geese using this method, it usually has to do with the placement of your fabric. Sometimes something as simple as um, your thread might be a little bit thicker. If you're using a thicker thread, sometimes that will make things not quite as accurate. Believe it or not, I have seen it in classes that I've taught. All right, cut this guy off. Oops, I got a little, got a little wonky. I was all excited talking to you. I got, <laughs> I got a little bit off, but I think we're good. Now, this is not something you can listen to Flight of the Valkyries while you're doing or, or uh, watch some very exciting drama. <laughs> you probably want to go with something a little more calm. All right, press out nicely. Look at that. Beautiful. There we go. So you can see how that's going to go together and it's going to continue to make a star point. Now what we want to do, we need to put these 
together. So you can refer back to video two where I showed the whole layout for doing the star block if you need to refresh your memory with that for putting the flying geese to the center. But for this one, I want to match this and I want to be exactly at a quarter of an inch. And I want to be exactly at that X. So when you need to do that as much as you can, put that X on the top. Don't put it on the bottom. Don't do it like this necessarily because you won't be able to see. There's going to be some times all throughout this that we're not going to be able to help doing it that way. But when, you're, when you can work this to your advantage, do it. All right, so this takes a little bit of feel. Let's see if I can kind of show you here. I've got my X and I know where my X is and I'm putting my fingernail in there and I can kind of feel where that little crease is. So I try to line up the X exactly with that. I can fold it down too and take a peek. I think that's pretty good. I think we're pretty good there. So what I like to do at that point when I've had to kind of um, use my fingernail to get it in the right spot, I like to take a pin and put it through just to hold it. Just to keep that little spot in check. Okay. Now we continue on as I get closer. As I get closer to that, I pull the pin out and then I'm watching also where that X is as I go along. Lovely. And then when I get to that point, I stop and I might readjust the rest of the block. Um, sometimes what can happen with these is that you haven't drawn the lines completely with complete accuracy or maybe when you cut it, you cut a little bit off or something. But that's enough to make a difference, um, like an eighth of an inch sometimes, up to an eighth of an inch. If that's the case, sometimes I'll just stretch it a little bit to make it work. Let's see how I did. Oh, nice, nice. I just love it when something works well. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna press that a little bit. Continue pressing it some more. So you would continue to add the other, I would add one here and then the strips that we'd showed previously um, to complete this block. All right, so in the next one, we're gonna make, we're gonna go on to borders here. We're gonna make the four patch border strips. I'll show you that. There's some tricky stuff to it, but we'll get it handled. So I look forward to seeing you next time. This episode of Essex Block of the Month is brought to you by Quilting Treasures, Imagine and Create.